welcome to our Thursday Night Live painting session at Natty K Studio. I'm so glad that you have chosen to join me tonight. So uh, I'm going to just take just a second to double check our mics tonight because last time we had some issues. I'm going to let my husband get outside the door for just a minute. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> tonight I have two cameras rolling. One is my professional camera and we'll re repost this video with the professional camera so that it'll be nice and clear. But right at this point, uh, I, I don't want to neglect you guys in our live sessions. It's so much fun to know that you're out there with me every Thursday night. It's just awesome. Uh, we're going to talk about the, I'm not going to talk about, we're going to demonstrate and do a little painting tonight on on how to create the uh, portrait palette. There's a couple of different ways of doing it. And so I want to just kind of simplify it for the first round. And then maybe uh, in a future date, we'll go and do this whole complex portrait palette that everybody's dying to know about, um, you know, at some point. But what is a skin tone? Well, uh, it's basically various different reds with various different yellows and a white. That's the, uh, the warm tones. And it's the cool tones that are really the ones that are a little bit challenging. They are challenging uh, because we sometimes forget to even use them and then our paintings look like Barbie and uh, it's not good. We don't want to look artificial. The only way that we can make our paintings look realistic is to have both a warm tone and a cool tone. And so what does that mean? Well, it means that we have things that remind us of sunshine, yellows, reds, oranges, uh, and I think I'm wearing every color of that tonight, but yellows, reds, oranges are the warm tones, and then the cool tones are in purples and blues and greens and grays. Okay, now color can be grayed down. That's another uh, story altogether. So we can take a, a really bright color and and pull it back a notch by graying it. That's kind of a verb. It's not not just a um, a color. It's not a color. It's black, white, and, and uh, just black and white. No, it's uh, you can gray a color or mute a color down. Well, let's just quit talking and get into it. All right. Now tonight I've got our little guy. This little guy. Um, he's so cute. He's a little schmoopster. We're going to be. Uh, painting over our grisaille painting, which just means black and white dried painting underneath. That's a really good way to do it. Paint it, paint it in black and white, and then glaze color over the top. Here's our little painting of our, our little guy. Isn't he cute? Very, very cute. Now, if you missed the last video on, um, on getting the proportions right, you can go back online and it's posted as of this week. All right, so now I'm going to take a, um, a little brush and I'm going to use some uh, little paper towels to wipe off my brush as we go. And because skin tones are really, you know, we don't have to wash our brush off every time we do anything, but I'll just wipe it off like this and then we'll have it. Now, these might slide around a little bit, so I want to be a little bit careful and get going here. What colors have I got? Well, I do have a little bit of a black. I have a black down here. Uh, small ivory black. This one is a nickel titan uh, something. Oh, I gotta look at it. It's a, a nickel yellow and it's a light, I think. Yes, it's a light nickel yellow. This one would be cadmium red light. I've got a little bit of orange just in case. I have some uh, bluer red, which is the alizarin crimson, which gives us a little more of a regular rosy pink. This one is more of a of a peachy pink. So we got peachy pink and rosy pink, all right? We should just change the color, the name of the color. But it's cadmium red light and alizarin crimson. Those are the two reds that I'm going to use, all right? There are all kinds of different reds. The main thing is you want one that leans a little more toward the, the violet or the bluish color red and one that leans towards the orange a little bit more, which would be our cadmium red or 
scarlet or that sort of thing. Uh, vermilion is a very warm, warm red. And then up here I have a yellow ochre. And I also have a strange one, which is a thalo turquoise. What am I going to use that for? Well, we'll just have to wait and see, will we? Yeah, we will. So now, uh, the first thing I want to do is figure out um, our basic skin, our warm skin tone. And on this baby, uh, we'll just use him for an example. We don't have to follow him exactly. Uh, we're going to go with this cadmium. Cadmium red is very, very, very strong. And so I'm going to put a little cadmium. And I don't mix a bunch of colors into that cadmium pile. No. Have you ever seen the artists that have huge piles of paint all the way around the circle? Uh, and then they just kind of use it in the middle. And they have a gigantic palette. I have one of those as well. But uh, I don't want to have to lift it. So um, we, we generally lay it way out all the way across this table. And it's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, now I'm going to take that. And let's test that out. If I put a little bit of white in there, and I, I don't mix it all in, ooh, isn't that a beautiful, beautiful pink? Just a lovely pink. And I hope this registers on our live camera today. And then I'm going to come in, uh, and I'm going to take a little yellow ochre with that, like this. And I'm going to take it, and I'm going to take a little bit of our red again, and some yellow ochre. And it kind of just mutes it down a little bit. And then I'll take some of the white. And I'm going to continue. I might need to get a little bit more here. There we go. Now a lot of times I use a raw sienna for the darker darks. But today I'm, well, i got to confess. I took it to the classroom and I have no idea where that tube went. So I will use raw sienna a lot in portraits. Raw sienna mixed in with this uh, yellow ochre, but this is going to work fine. Now, what I want is I want some variations of that color combination. So I'm going to take that, that yellow ochre and the cadmium red light, and then I'm going to add another layer. So I'm creating three little piles by adding white to it and adding another layer of white, and I might go up about six layers of white. I use a lot of white when I'm mixing the palette down. So, re, uh, reiterating, yellow ochre with cadmium red light and white and add white and add white and add white. And that is our wonderful peachy pinky pink, all right, for our baby's face. Now, the next color I'm going to do is I'm going to take the yellow ochre, hopefully without any of that mess, and I'm going to come up here and add some clean white to the yellow ochre. Just a little bit here. I'm going to leave some of it out a little bit, and then I'm going to add more white to it. And these are our warm, our basic warm, <coughs> excuse me, basic warm tones for this particular baby painting. Okay. Now, if I want to, uh, I can come in uh, for darker, well, actually, let's, let's test this out, too. This is our little tiny bit of alizarin crimson. Now, what's the difference? I don't know if we'll be able to tell. I'm going to grab some clean white, and you can see it's just, hopefully you can see this, is a little bit of a rosy pink rather than peachy pink. I hope that makes sense. So this is just something that we might use in a little bit. Now, on top of that, I've got some of uh, this really dark value of, of uh, turquoise. I'm going to wipe my brush off again. I'm going to grab some turquoise. This is the weird one, you guys. Turquoise and some of that red alizarin crimson. And I've got a really dark, 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 dark. Okay, turquoise that's almost black. In fact, I could use it for black. I don't really need that black. Look at how dark that is. So I could use that for the pupils in the eye, or I can choose to come down and use a black down here. I'm going to see what color that is, turquoise and alizarin crimson, when I add just some clean. And this is going to blow your mind. Okay, 
this gives me a violet color that is just yummy. Violet color, turquoise, phthalo turquoise, and alizarin crimson will give me this beautiful violet color. Depending on how much white I add to it, it's going to be kind of, um, you know, it'll be more and more interesting as we go. But uh, let's just see what happens if I add a little more white over here. So I'm going to give a little bit like a three, three color, three tonal values. I got to clip that and try it again. Enough white to change the tone because it's very strong. Phthalo turquoise and alizarin crimson are really, really, really super strong. I think I just clipped another alizarin crimson on there, so I'm going to have to keep working it. Okay, well, you get the idea there. Let me just keep going here. I'm going to put a little more so we can get lighter and lighter. Lighter. I want to have something light to work with. Oh, this is going to be fun. My little cat, Julius. Julius is at the door meowing. He wants some food. Does anybody mind if I let him in? Okay, I hope he doesn't mess up our <laughs> event. You're going to, you know what you're going to hear in the background? Crunch, crunch, crunch. I'll be right back. I'm going to do that. Hang on. Julius, what are you doing? Come in. That's what happens when you have a studio cat. That's right. Hope I don't step on him. He's going to bump the camera. No, no. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That's going to be fun. All right. Well, bear with me. So, okay. So, now I've got these kind of a, a little bit of this cool thing, but I also want to make sure that my violet color, and I'm going to do it one more time, so turquoise with alizarin crimson. I don't want to make it to the point where it's not, uh, so it doesn't look like, <laughs> it doesn't look like, anything that's human. I want to make sure it has some sort of a, a skin tone property. So what if I warm that up just a tad or muted it down with a little bit of this cadmium orange. Let's play around with that a little bit. Okay, so this gives me a really deep, a really, really deep, deep shadow tone. Really deep shadow tone. So if I'm doing, uh, I need some shadows, but I don't need them quite that dark for the baby. But if I need a darker shadow tone for, say, uh, Hispanic, Indian, or, you know, any other race, uh, African American, I might use that. And I could even make another variation by adding a beautiful red. And I know you can't quite see all these uh, variations, but... So turquoise and alizarin crimson and then adding some of my oranges and reds to it will create rich dark tones that I can use for either shadows on a Caucasian face or I can use them for uh, the uh, uh, darker skin tones of, of uh, uh, African American or Indian or you know whatever whatever other races that we want to kind of um, attempt. So I got to admit something. I had, I, I did a, um, a Chinese uh, fellow who was knighted by, he was from Hong Kong, and he was um, uh, knighted by the Queen of England. No kidding. I was working on this, and this lady was a, a, a really highfalutin store owner in Pasadena years ago. And I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I had not really painted that many portraits in my life. All of a sudden, this lady, she says, she would kept come in and she'd say, no, 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 we are not pink. We are yellow. And I had to keep looking and I'd look at the painting and realize that I kept painting it with my own skin tones. And I, I realized that that was not how she saw it. And it's definitely, and I found, you know what? I got to admit, I finally gave up. I just couldn't do it right. <laughs> so we need to be aware that there are definitely some different skin tones going on around the world. And when you're doing portraits, you better know what they are. All right. Now, uh, okay, so that's a really good base for what we need to do. What would happen, let's just see what would happen if I added a little bit of white to this particular mixture. Okay. So now I've got this kind of muted purple. Now I can add a tiny bit more orange to it if I want to make it a little bit glowy. And then I can just play with that a little bit here and there, and I can I can mute it down, I can fix it up, I can pink it up, I can do 
you know, if I want to do a little bit, I can just work it back and give myself a variety of, of tonal values. I'm going to take this back a notch with the turquoise and go backwards like this, and I can push it around and make this gray tone. It's kind of a gray purple. And I think that's probably enough to work with, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, what have I got in my tin today? Inside my little cat tin is um, a um, medium called Neo Medio. Now, you can use uh, liquid. You can use all kinds of different um, mediums if you like. This one I really like. Uh, I've been using it for a long time. I used to use another one called Galkide. I still use that from time to time. This one's a gel, and it, it's just kind of like a, a really loose kind of Vaseline. I don't know if you can use Vaseline. Probably not a good idea. But this one is, is really a nice one. It... Uh, what does it say? It maintains a body of oil colors, but it increases the transparency and the flow of the paint. So, it, you know how sometimes you get a paint that's too dry and it just goes, uh, 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 uh. well, you don't want that to happen when you're painting a portrait. No, you don't. So, now I'm going to pull this away, and we're going to take a look at, oh, here I've got this one down here I didn't even touch. This is that yellow titanate there. Um, I'm gonna. Oops! I want to wipe that off just a, a little bit there. This one, if you really want to get, ah, I just added mud to it. That's not good. That's the fun of of a live camera, isn't it? Um, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna grab another brush, and then I'm gonna test that out. This is almost like this, except for this is a little peachier, and this is more along what I was talking about with that yellow tone. When you want something that looks really sunny, okay, you're going to work up a lot of times from dark to metal tone to light. And so you want to uh, have the lightest light that you can get and then the darkest dark somewhere in the middle of your palette as well. Okay, now uh, I'm going to come in here. I've got this. What have I got here? Well, this is a uh, one that we painted and <laughs> you're going to love this. You want to see this? Okay, hang on. I've got to toss this guy back out again. He's being naughty. Hang on. Isn't that fun? All right. Out, out. I'm going to go out. Maybe not. Well, I'll give him the option. He's a tree climber, and he likes to climb my leg because he thinks it's a tree. Okay, no, no. It's not a tree. Julius, good grief. Come up here. You want to show everybody who you are? He loves me ter terribly and wants to be with me, except for when he's out chasing squirrels and birds. That's just really, really fun. Now, when I, I'm going to get a clean paper towel, and then I'm going to get uh, a kind of a wider, what size is this one? This is one of my dad's. This is a, actually it says it's a flat, but I think it's been kind of worn down by my dad. It, uh, and it's a size 8. And it's a bristle brush. It doesn't really matter if it's a bristle brush or not, but it's just one of those things. So I'm going to go with a little bit of my gel, and I'm going to show you something kind of crazy. I'm taking my, my colors over here, and I'm going to take, uh, let's see, a little bit of, I want to make sure this is nice and, and uh, clear a little bit, so I want to, and white, of course, you guys, is very opaque. So uh, the more white you put into your painting, into your paints, the more opaque or the less you're going to be able to see through it. But I want to start it out by just really putting on a nice um, slick, doesn't that, I mean, look at this. It's dry underneath, all right? This was made with gesso and, in essence, charcoal or graphite, okay? And then it's dried. And so instantly... I have this marvelous option of, of being able to put on a nice glaze of this pretty color, and I hope you can see it, of the substance number two on our level, which is the cadmium red light mixed with the yellow ochre, mixed with just the slightest amount of white so that I don't cover up the features. I won't cover them up because... They are nice, they're underneath there, and they're dry. Guess what? If I make a mistake and I don't like it, the only thing I have to do is take a rag 
put a little bit of thinner and wipe it up. Now one question that pops up is, what are you painting on? Is that a canvas? Is it a linen canvas? No, this time I'm working on a masonite panel. One of my very favorite things to paint on. I put a layer of, um, of gesso, one or two layers of gesso on there, and then I do the drawing, and then I do, you know, uh, I let it dry. Uh, oh, then I do it with gesso and, and charcoal, and then I let it dry, and then we do this part. That's our wrap. So this was, it's so smooth and so nice, and a lot of the major players, you guys, a lot of them are now uh, using masonite panels. They've been using wood panels and, and that sort of thing for hundreds of years, and it keeps the paint stable. It doesn't crack because it isn't flexible, all right? When you move paintings from museum to museum, they always have that, that kind of, uh, you know, that terror of, uh-oh, if that that uh, that canvas starts flexing, it, it can actually just crack and have to be repaired. So this is a, a much better option. Now I can come in here and kind of wipe off the highlights. I'm going to pull this baby out and I'm going to come in and I'm going to wipe off the highlights just like we did on uh, the last little baby that we did. And I just, I just love this technique. It's just so fun. You could almost just sign it and, you know, well, maybe not. You could. <laughs> not quite done. So then we go like this and we put in all, you know, we can just get the highlights established if we want. And the, remind you that this paint is really thin to start with. We work from thin to thick, thin to thick. And then I'm going to come in with my other, I have another little brush here. I'm going to, oops, I don't got too many things going on here. You've got to be able to juggle here. I'm not going to use a super small brush right now, everybody. This one is still a pretty good size one. This is a size 6 uh, Royal um, uh, Filbert. You want to use Filberts when you're doing portraits. It's just part of the thing. So uh, we're going to come in, and I'm going to begin by, by grabbing a little bit of my uh, darker tones down here. And that's in a, a very, I've got my old paper towels here. I'm, I test it out and I say, okay, that's really super warm. So now I want to cool it down. I'm going to come back up into some of my greens. And we're going to look at that. I can match that color pretty close and work that in just a little bit. I won't leave it quite that dark, but uh, I'll kind of come in and do a little bit of this. I want to come into the nostril area. And I like this, this color for that. It's got a little bit of red, a little bit of green. And then I'm going to bring, let's see, I'll, I'll just see where I can see some of the darker tones just a little bit. Again, the thing that's going to make this face look so good and so three-dimensional is that there's going to be a dark color on this side of the face and a light color on this side of the face. This is the dark side of the face, so I'm going to light it up a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow right there. And I'll pull some of this off because it's pretty strong. Remember when you're doing babies you don't want to get too carried away with with lines and dark, you know, really crazy things. You want to make it nice and delicate. And so now I'm going to, I'm got, that's my darkest dark that I think I'm going to go with on the face. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to find that light right there. And I'm going to figure out where my lightest light is going to roll. And so I'm going to come up. Uh, well, let's just get into this yellow ochre with white. And then we're going to put in some right here. Okay. So I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to merge that a little bit together. Yellow ochre with white. I know that one, you can barely see the difference, but uh, trust me, it's there. And then I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab a little more white, and we're going to put in this nice, so you can see what the difference is. Now, when you first start out on this gesso, sometimes it is so dry that it makes it a little bit tough to, to um, get going on it. But once you get the paint on, it really does work really well. There's a little thing right here. Little chin, a little bit of a, a 
anything there, a little bit there. And then, so we've got the lightest light is going to hit where the light is in line with the, what's called the apex, in line with the light, which means whatever sticks out farthest in line with the light is going to hit with the highest highlight. Ah, does that make sense? Um, and uh, sometimes it's what's what's under as well. So I've got that going on. All right, now it's starting to, to look a little more three-dimensional as we go. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to exaggerate. I'm going to take some of these really rosy pinks. I might not see this in this baby, but on this picture. So I'm going to put it in anyway because it's effective. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm really going to rosy it up. Okay, I see it often. The ears are really rosy, so I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to put a little rose there. I want to put in some uh, on the nose because that's sticking out forward and it's a very hot spot. And then some on the chin. So the, uh, the cheeks and the nose and usually kind of around up here in the eyebrow a little bit. The forehead may have a little bit. Where I don't want to put the warm is above the lip. On the lip, yeah, I do. I want to have that nice and warm, but I want to remember that the upper lip is, and I've got this huge brush, is darker than the lower lip, uh, but his is also pretty tucked in, so it might not be quite as, as pronounced. So I've got this little thing, and I'll, I'll get in here with a little bit more concentration here in a bit. But uh, I'm going to come over here, I've got that pink, and instantly that baby starts I'm a delight. It really does. And so isn't that fun? So what do we, I, I think what, what is fun is when you do the black and white thing ahead of time, you eliminate all that, that uh, kind of nervousness about um, the nervousness when it comes to, oh, have I got the drawing right? So you're not having to orchestrate the entire thing where you're doing the drawing, the painting, the color, the tone. The shape, the tone, and the color all at one time. You don't want to have to do the shape and the color all at one time because it's just too many things to juggle. Okay, now the next thing I want to do, I'm going to get some more of this, this uh, Neil Magill on my brush. I'm going to shoot for a little bit of this cooler purple. You see a little bit of that color right here where the eye goes in. Now babies don't, their eyes aren't sunk way back in. But they are in uh, a little bit, you know, babies' faces are often quite a bit flatter because they don't, uh, well, they just need to be flat in order to nurse. Yeah, they just do. They have big old honking noses. They wouldn't be able to get in there and nuzzle their mommy. That doesn't shock any of you, but yes, that's what babies do. And uh, then I'm going to come in, there's a, this area right here, everybody, uh, is super important. Um, I'm going to, the, the thing that will make this baby look like who he is, is this, this area right here, this little muscle, uh, right on the corner of the mouth. And as we get older, of course, uh, we get more pronounced area right there, and we get wrinkles. So I don't want to overemphasize that, um, because I don't want him looking like Benjamin Button. In the first part of the movie, I get a chance to watch that one. That's a weird one. I watched that one last week. I haven't. I don't normally spend any time watching movies, but I had to watch that one again. It was so much fun. So uh, he ages backwards. If you're wondering, he starts out as a wrinkly old man baby, and then he goes backwards. It's pretty fun. Pretty interesting concept. Okay, and I'm going to come in around the little nose right here. There's a little shadow. Because the light's coming from here, and even though his little nose is very, very, very small, it is also uh, in shadow on this one side of his nose. Not too much, just a little bit. And as babies age, or as kids, people age, that, that begins to um, you know, change a little bit as we go. Okay, now up here... I want to put a little bit more of a yellow tone, so I'm going to come in here with our yellow. I'm also going to just punch it up just a little bit darker there. Okay, so that's more like yellow ochre by itself a little bit on this side of the face. Yellow ochre. 
and in a darker tone and then in the inset. I'm not going to focus on, on making the ears super detailed. You don't need to make them detailed. It's not important. Not important. So what needs to be important? Anybody want to answer that? The eyeballs. The eyeballs are going to have to be important. Now here's another fun one. I will come in with some white and just a touch of teal or that turquoise, which makes a teal. And I'm going to mix in tons and tons and tons of white. So basically it's a white that's toned. I've added a new skin tone here. Toned with a little bit of teal. It's a cool white. So white with a touch of teal. Teal is the strongest color. It's one that your cat steps in and then walks all over your white carpet. I don't have white carpet, but if I did, that would be right where he would step. Oh, and he also likes magenta. He was wearing magenta under his chin for four weeks. That was fun. So now I still have, I have this warm, 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 warm thing, but now I've got this cool, uh, cool light of, of teal, and I'm gonna put that up here in this highlight and it will, and also this muscle that comes across there, a little bit of teal in the highest highlights right there. And I need a little bit of Neo Megal. And then I'm going to find it right here. The shape goes this way, and it goes this way. All right, so don't forget, it's, it's uh, not just painting a wall. You're going to think about now beginning to, I've uh, got one more section that needs a little bit of that white right there, right there, this uh, tealy white, the tealy white there, and then uh, I'm going to then wipe off my brush, and then I'm going to come in and, and begin to merge, fuse the edges of these, uh, these little shapes that I put down with the shape next to it. Okay. You can't do this unless you have paint to fuse into. You know what I mean? You can't just say, oh, I'm going to put this color down like paint by number and then go to this color, go to this color. No, you have to have two colors and then you take the edge of where that color is so we don't lose any of that, uh, that wonderful paint, but we just merge it a little bit with this beautiful soft brush. Thank you, Dad. Uh, and I'm going to come in and merge the edges and calm it down a little bit, but not just, you know, you don't want to what we call in our class, pet the raccoon. It's usually pet the dog, but we were painting raccoons the other day. I cragged for my class. Um, we don't want to keep just petting it, petting it, and petting it until it all disappears. If you hit it more than a few times, you're going to lose what you put down, all right? Meow, meow, meow. You're making it really entertaining, Julius. I forgot to do this part on the nose to make it round. There. Yeah. You want to say hi? Okay, hang on, everybody. Hold on. Come here. This is Julius. He wanted to say hi. Can you say hi, Julius? Say meow. Yeah, okay. Good, good. Joy of kids and pets. I can't say that that's the first time that's ever happened. We had Billy Jack in one vis video, and he passed away this last year, so we got, uh, got this crazy guy. He's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. He's a climber. Boy, he climbs trees. Oh, my goodness cases deer we had all kinds of deer in the backyard he likes them one day he got he got licked by a big old uh big deer in the backyard i turned around and his here this deer was and his whole backside was just covered with deer slobber that was that was fun yesterday i got back out in the yard and uh there was a big huge buck and so i followed around the yard and took pictures of it i'll just show that to you i'll show that to you yes i will Okay, now back in here, I've got this warm color now. I'm going to merge the edge. If I could teach you one thing, it would be about taking, not merging the entire thing together, but taking the, the elements besides. Look how loose and beautiful that is. Isn't it just quite something? I just think it's a, 
that's how you do it. You just take this beautiful, man, what is this brush? I don't even know what it is. It's a, um, it's called a Royal, number six Royal something, soft grip. Oh, it's a soft grip. And uh, I've never used this brush before. I think it's my new favorite. I like it a lot. Okay. Brushes do have, you know, sometimes people say, oh, what's the brush? And, and it really shouldn't matter. Well, it does. You know, brushes are important. You don't want to have, uh, there are some cheaper brushes, less expensive brushes that are good. Um, and so don't get me wrong there. It isn't the cost, but it is the brush. Make sure you find one that works really well for you. They do make a difference, I have learned. Inheriting all of my father's materials. Shout out to my stepmother, who's coming up on one year. Hi, Carol. Um, she's a she's a doll. She's uh, such a blessing, and she's gone through so much losing my dad. And so, um, these are his materials. This is his big beautiful easel that he built by his own hands, and I'm so grateful to have it in my studio, and I've enjoyed it so much. Um, in the last little bit. But it's been almost a year, um, just in a couple of days, it will have been an entire year since my father passed away. And time, uh, you know, I, I, they always say time heals, but really, when you are that connected to somebody, as, as my stepmother was to my father, uh, time doesn't heal very fast. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Boy, we get that. All right. And this week, my husband's mother passed away. Wow. That's been quite a, it's been quite a week. So, okay. There's that cutie cutie. Now I'm going to switch a little bit up. I'm going to switch to, I wish I didn't have quite this small a brush. I wonder if I have something else. Oh, well, I'll do it. Anyway, I'm going to uh, now come in and in the inside of the eye, I'm going to come in with my um, black, I'm, I really am going to use black, uh, the ivory black, and we're going to come in and put in the pupil right here. This will bring it right to life. And you hope to make it the same size. That would be nice. Okay. And the baby's eyes are a blue color. And so I'm going to, actually I'm going to use turquoise because I don't, I forgot to set out the regular blue. That was smart. Okay, and I'm going to take turquoise around the outside edge. The younger the person is, the more likely they're going to have a ring around the eye. The older we get, the more faded out this ring gets. And so if you're painting a really old person and you want them to look really old, you leave out, or you, yeah, you leave out this ring around the eye like that okay that's looking a little bit off but it's because i'm standing a whole foot and a half over to the side okay how many times have you heard me say that if you've been with me a long time i say that a lot i'm like i'm over to the side normally if i were painting this i would be over here okay that's true and then i'm going to do this i'm going to come in with a tiny bit of white into what's on my brush and the light is coming from over here down to here so the light is going to uh, going to come out it's going to shoot through the eye and it's going to shoot through right there it's going to be light on this side and I'm using the width of the brush to kind of measure uh, the, the, and the width of the cornea and then I'm going to take a dot of white. I've got this in the wrong position. Wait a sec. I want to go back in. I'm going to fill this in because the highlight's in the wrong spot. Way to go. Way to go, Natty. Okay. So this one's a little bit off, but I'll fix that later. Um, and I'm going to now wipe my brush off, get my brush, and get a nice uh, big chunk of paint on the end of it. And then I'm going to go between the the pupil and where the color is, I'm going to lob a tiny little white dot at about 10 o'clock. What do I mean by that? 
I mean, if the eyeball was a clock, it would be at the 10 o'clock mark. Okay, and, and generally, I will put, I will put, if the light's coming from the opposite direction, I'll put a white dot on uh, the opposite side. The main thing that you don't want to do, <laughs> even with dogs, I don't do this as much. Uh, I don't want to put a highlight on one side on one eye and on the other side on the other on the other eye because then the eyes will look crossed. Oh no, you don't want that. No, you don't. Even if they are, even if they are crossed a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to come up back in here with my kind of interesting little brown that I created with the orange, the turquoise, and then the purple. And I'm going to very delicately, very, very delicately, kind of give the indication. I don't want groucho marks here. I want the indication of a brow, almost a brow bone, not, not so much a, a, a big old bushy eyebrow. I want a brow bone. And so I'm going to muddle that in with just a little bit of, of the paint that's already on there. And then I'm going to get a little more of this. And I'm going to come in with the redder, a little bit of redder uh, in our darks. And I want to, I use my fingernail for my mall stick here. I'm going to come in and I don't want to make black holes in the nostril. You don't want to use black. All right, if you use black, you have a hole in the head. And this is a really warm spot down here, you know. The warm spot and guess what the nostrils are not are not round they're not like a big donut hole your nostrils on the outside are not the donut with the donut hole in the middle no they're not okay so what are they well they're kind of like little little polylogs really they have this this shape on this side it's like it's like this it's like oh i hope you can see this it's like this not a big big round hole in it like that you know or like whatever i'm gonna wreck this painting for you not a big dark round hole it's it's a different shape and it really depends on the angle of the photo as well the more you turn your face or down up and down you're going to see less of it or more of it and so even this is a bit much but not too bad not too bad i'll come back in and probably modify that just a little bit later on and so when I'm doing the nose part, okay, on this part, I know that in order for this, no, not, this nose to turn under, it has to be dark underneath. And then I have a little shadow on that side of the nose. And then there's this little thing down here called a philtrum. A what? And uh, it's a philtrum, and it's extremely light. If you make it really dark, you make it look kind of like one of those little... Uh, Mussolini, no, Hitler mustaches. You don't want to do that. Um, and the darker it is, the older the kid, the person looks. So I'm going to come in with a very, I want a little bit darker than that. I want to do slightly teal and purple. And I want to make it just, I'm exaggerating it just a little bit. The thing is that now, see, it looks too dark. And so now I'm going to come in. On the side where the light's hitting, it's going to hit on this side of it. It's going to hit on that side of it like that. And then it's going to come down in a V over the lip like that. I think I'm really off center, but that's because I'm over here. So, And then I'm going to come up, and I'm using teals and I'm using yellows. I'm not using pink. Okay. So there's this little muscle that comes in right there over the lip before the lip comes in. Um, you don't attach the lip, direct the actual lip lip to the philtrum. The philtrum doesn't come all the way down and split the lip, unless you're a cat, okay? <laughs> Just saying, I don't know how many of us are cats. But uh, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna start kind of forming that in just a little bit so that it's not quite so crazy. But it's kind of in a cool tone. That's a, a cool tone. I'm going to pull a little bit of that cool right there into the nose. And then I'm also going to take a little bit of the light as it comes and hits that side of the nose right there. That mouth is almost disappearing, isn't it? Woo! I better put him back in there. 
uh, I'm going to come down and shape the lip like this because I'm seeing it shaped slightly different. And uh, I'm going to uh, come in like this. And now I'm going to find the parting line, the parting line between the lips just a little bit. And I want to make sure it's not in a, a really black color, just kind of a dark, one of these dark browns that we've got up here uh, that are, are really nice. Now I'm going to reshape the lip. I'm going to find that parting line of the lip like this. I think it's slightly lower than that. And then bring it down. No laughing if it's off center because I know it's going to be. Ah, I know it's going to be. So there is that. And then I'm going to put this shadow in again down here. And then we're going to put the lip in just a little bit better. So I'm going to get a little darker one of these peach. Lip color, everybody, is a muted down color of the flesh tone. Or it's a little bit, it can be darker than the flesh tone, but you don't want to make it lipstick. So you want to have it slightly grayed. It's a slightly grayed color, but not, not too grayed because you don't want them to look like they're not breathing. And then I'm putting a little lip on the top. It's so cute. And then I'm going to put the bottom lip. Now, generally, 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 the bottom lip has more light on it because it sticks out more. And then the top lip is darker. So I probably said that already. And then I'm going to put in just a little bit, a little bit more just because I want it. I'm not doing a portrait. You can do whatever you want. It's just not a has to have to be right. <laughs> oh, you want it to be right. I also want to get that, that pink into the nose just a little bit more. And I'm going to pull down that, that highlight just a tad. You know, it's just playing around. I'm going to also, while I can see it, I'm going to take this and, and uh, shape the ear just a tiny bit. The ear is a funny thing. It has kind of a question mark on it right here. A little question mark right there and uh, you don't need much more than that fill it in. I do want to have it nice and hot though so now I'm going to take some of that bright pink and kind of spray that in a little bit and you can get into it but if you <laughs> if you get really into the details of the ear uh, sometimes it will look like an ear with a baby hanging off of it you know what i mean it's like it's like oh there's a painting of an ear with a baby hanging off of it okay that's a little weird okay so now i want to put this make sure this little there that looks like a baby i hope make sure that's dark don't forget that sometimes you see a little indication of that uh, eyelid on in some areas so I'm going to give a little indication of an eyelid over there I don't see it going all the way across here I do see one that goes about halfway across to there and then it kind of comes up like that nice round round little baby eyes what about the whites of the eyes well right now they look just about what they should be and they are in a flesh tone okay but generally, I think about them in uh, a combination of, well, let's test this out, not too bright. If they are white, I know we call them the whites of the eyes, you know, but you call the whites of the egg before they're cooked whites, and they're not white, they're clear. But anyway, the whites of the eye are not white white. They are a kind of a flesh tone, but I think they lean into, say I put a little bit of uh, yellow, let's see what happens if I do that. Okay, that's going to be too light. Not terribly too light. This is just one of our little fleshy tones with the yellow ochre. I'm going to put just a little bit of that over here. I actually like the whites the way they are, but for the sake of demonstration, we're going to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. And sometimes I'll put a tiny bit of purple in them. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of purple, a little lavender. And it really helps... To get the eyes looking in the right direction, all you have to do is 
all you have to do guys is uh, find the shape and the size of the whites you know what I'm trying to get the eyeball in the right direction and getting it settled down but you want to just find the shape uh, and the size of the whites on the outside and it will work so that's in kind of a lavender color right there sometimes there's going to be a little sense of a little bit of, of moisture on the edge of that so you can add just a tiny bit of, of a, a light mark on the edge of it or even a pink and so if I add a, a light light pink on the edge in the white that's kind of nice light pink on the edge of the eye because it's three-dimensional the lid sticks out okay not too much on a baby but the lid generally sticks out okay now I'm gonna go back in and just do a few little touch-ups and I think we're getting close all right I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna bring that cheekbone up a little bit more as I see it and then right here oh my goodness right here there is a an area that has a little bit of a light I'm doing this with a gigantic brush that's really funny and then um, I have this this part is nice and light right there all right don't paint with your fingers it's oil be careful with that and then down here I've got a little more of a little fatty thing going on there I'm going to just tone this out a little bit make it a little bit less crazy I don't want lines I don't want you know little facial lines I just am trying to avoid that at all costs we don't see things in lines Ugh. how many times do I have to say that um, now I'm going to get some of this brownish gray color with an indication of a little bit of just a little bit of fuzz fuzzy hair isn't that cute and then we're going to Just kind of randomly willy-nilly putting this in like that it's pretty dark over on this side I painted a painting I've got it behind me here that really got dark this is way back 30 years ago I think I painted it and uh, had my son and and um, I realized boy I was into the seriously gray color at that time now I've got this going. I just got them looking like a little Caesar here. A few little bits because he doesn't have a lot of hair. He's just got kind of an indication of fuzz. Like that. This is way too dark. He looks a little angry. We don't want an angry baby. So I'm going to come back in and add that light, light yellow and soften that out. Really, everybody, you got to step back too. I'm not stepping back, and I need to, but I do have a monitor way over here that I can see. Yay! I've been working without a monitor for a little while with this phone and uh, phone camera, and it's uh, it's a little bit crazy. Okay, I want to make sure this little guy comes down a little bit like that. We'll make him a little bit more babyish, and I'll let I'll let you take a look at him when I when I polish him up a little bit later. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put the paint, I'll finish up the baby's painting. I, I know you guys probably don't like that when I do that. <laughs> or I say, okay, now I'm going to go off and spend five hours on it without you looking, and then I'll show it to you. I know that drives you crazy. Um, but I will hopefully work on it just a little bit more. So you know what I had yesterday? I had a, a wonderful visitor. I had my friend Cowboy Fred. That's what I call him. I think he calls himself that, too. He's a, a, a cowboy, a real-life cowboy. He's... Um, really neat guy he came and visited our studio yesterday and and posed in the studio wow was that ever a treat i just loved having fred with us there it was just fantastic and we got to work on a portrait of him and it was so much fun really really fun i love working with a live model it's fun i you know it's hard sometimes for a lot of us to work with a live model because when you're working with photos you've already got that whole two-dimensional thing worked out you know and so um, that's the that's the hard part okay now I'm gonna do something crazy I'm gonna put in a white dot right there wow that shows up nice 
and then I'm going to come in here and do the same thing with just, I don't often use straight white, but what I've got is I've got paint down onto the baby, on the baby's face, and so I'm really just mixing or, or merging the white paint that I have on my brush with the paint that's on the panel that I'm working on. And so it's a bit like uh, mixing it on to the painting uh, as it is. And so uh, I actually want to just shape that. This lip does not look like baby mouth. And make sure it looks a little bit more babyish. There. Okay. See how nice and loose that is? Okay. Well, how do I make this really pop out? I'm going to do one last thing. And I want to come in, uh, because this is the light side of the face, as I was saying, and that's the dark side of the face. So I'm going to come in with my light white, and I'm going to put in some white paint, and I'm going to come in and shape out using the negative space or negative shape um, around the face, and I'm going to use a white to begin with. You don't have to use a white, but I want to make sure it's nice and light. So uh, I start out with the white, and then I'm going to work paint into it. You know, I don't use, again, I don't use a lot of black and white and all that kind of stuff. I just use, but because I want this to have a light value, I'm going to start with white on the canvas. You can see how that face automatically just starts coming out like that. And then um, we go, I'm just going to go up, up, up and shape the head. I'm not drawing a line around it. I'm just kind of creating this airy atmosphere around the baby's head. How's our time doing, everybody? Are we good? I'm just going to peek just for a second and make sure I'm not overdoing it. And, oh, we are getting close to, all right, 57. So we're getting really close to the end. And I'm just going to, before I run out of time, I'm going to take a little bit of our dark value here. And I'm going to put a little bit of red. And I'm going to make it dark on this side. And so that the light part of the face stands out. And I think we are just about out of time right now. And then I'm going to merge this together like this. I'm going to come across. And I'm going to add some just various different colors. But I'm going to kind of come together like that. And then I will add a little bit of yellow and some light different little different colors as I kind of come in here, but I'm, I'm just going to look how that face just instantly sets off like that. Okay, everybody, I think we are out of time. I do hope you guys will join me next time. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to work next Thursday, um, and, but we're going to give it our best to see if we can do another video from Copan, Washington. Oh my gosh, I hope I can do it. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, and uh, it, it should be a good time for everyone. Yeah. So, love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. And let's get that number up for our viewers up to 4,000 hours. We're at 2,800 hours and some. And we're trying to move it up to 4,000 hours. So make sure you share it with your friends and go and watch another video all the way through from the beginning to the end. Okay? All right. Love you guys. See you later. Bye-bye for now.